So, what's on today's lesson plan? Newmon... oh no... Okay, let's do this. New Monarchy isn't inherently bad, nor are they on a side that I entirely disagree with, but let's make no bones about it. I don't understand them at all. Well, save for one aspect, perhaps. Perhaps we should start with the tenets of the New Monarchy. They make it pretty easy to follow, so here goes a list to look over. 1. To secure our walls against the enemy without. 2. To secure the rights and liberties of every upstanding citizen. 3. To sponsor the sciences of the city and to salvage the ruins beyond so that our golden age might be reborn. 4. To support the guardian orders by leading the city in technological innovation. 5. To support the natural harmony of the city and to actively dissuade any group or individual that might disrupt that harmony. 6. To hold all individuals, compacts, and alliances to the highest standards of productivity and right behavior. 7. To, by vote of the consensus, abolish the consensus and transfer ultimate power in order that the rights and liberties of all citizens are secured to a single sovereign of unimpeachable character. Perhaps we'll start at the bottom and work our way up, uh, kind of. The seventh point is easily the most interesting since it showcases the monarchy's true goals. Basically, the ideas are that the speaker shouldn't be in the place of leadership that it is within our civilization. Not that you'll hear any argument from me on that one. Still, the way that they go about this certainly causes a lot of questions. Now, to be clear, the monarchy isn't saying that only they will be the ones that would create or put a person in place as king. They feel it should be a decision made by the consensus, the collective of the vanguard and other factions that lead the city. Politics is just, you know what, let's go away from the politics for a moment because there has to be something more endearing about this faction. Thankfully there is, and it comes back to a few of the earlier tenants, especially in the leader of the monarchy himself. Executor Hideo. Hideo has a very storied history in the city, starting with plasteel manufacturing and handing out a lot of his funds to children, the elderly, and devoting a lot of his time to science and city development. He carried a lot of these ideas into the monarchy, especially into tenants 3 and 4, which are to support guardian orders, salvage units, and science research. This also makes me feel they have a good bit to do with the weapons foundries around the city. Wouldn't really surprise me with Hideo having a lot of interest in science and the revitalization of the city to the Golden Age. After all, their creed is, together we rise. These are the main ideas of the monarchy when they aren't busy having questionable political practices, and it's something I can definitely get behind. That and they serve to safeguard the powers in the city and go against those that are simply around to stop the very fragile synergy that we have as a people. To better explain what I mean, let's look at Bannerfall and Lysander. Simply put, Lysander stood to end the consensus and try to overrule the power that the speaker had. Being that this was not a unanimous decision by the consensus and thus going against a base principle of the monarchy, Executor Hideo ordered that Lysander be stopped by force if necessary. This led to Guardians infiltrating and putting down the faction that Lysander led, known as the Concordat. Originally a member of the consensus, the Concordat sought to end the power of the speaker, just not in the same ways as the monarchy. Anyway, long story short is Lysander was ousted and exiled for his crimes against the collective of the city. Of course, I can't help but agree with the ideas to get rid of the speaker, but the way they would go about it would be, well, not what I'd prefer. I guess that's what holds up about New Monarchy. Yes, they want to put a single soul power in check, something that hasn't necessarily worked out too well for humanity in the past, but at the least, they're doing it a way that I can respect and understand, even if I don't agree with it on a personal level. We are stronger with alternative ideas and viewpoints on the table, working out differences and trying to see each other's views, not ruled by a single go do this because I said so kind of person. That could just be the free spirit in me, however. In either case, the next time you pick up a weapon from a foundry or equip a new piece of armor, you may be using something that was funded in part by the monarchy. I'm definitely thankful for all that they've done to help revitalize the sciences and industry in the city, and I'm even more so thankful to Hideo for helping the children and elderly in these early days where there really was little hope but what we could offer each other. Make no mistake, however, 
the War Cult, Vanguard, and Dead Orbit are sure to watch over the new monarchy closely should they ever step out of line with the tenants they have in place, lest they become another concordant. They walk a fine line between unity and division. In either case, this is just another view of a faction you can serve in the city. If you agree with them overall, don't let my views stop you. I'm one for hearing all sides of a story. I've just made my mind up, and hearing my opinion can help you formulate your own. This finishes our lesson schedule for now, but more topics will be on their way soon. After all, we still have plenty of prominent figures to look at, along with events in our history that really serve to understand our future. For now, leave a comment card with what you thought of our lesson so far, and if you're just not sure what to say, leave the phrase, Monarch Rising, to indicate what new monarchy wants in the end for the city. Don't forget to hit the like or dislike button for Ikora to know how I'm doing, but if nothing else, I'll see you soon with more speculation and thoughts for later. Class dismissed.